Hi, hello, good day everyone. I am Ro and Joy Balitok, your presenter for today. I will be presenting a summary from the book of Genesis to Revelations with the use of Bible dispensations. Let me start with our first dispensation, innocence. So this takes us back from creation to the expulsion from the garden. Let us begin with the creation where the earth was without form and darkness was deep. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. So that was the first day of creation. God cre separated light and darkness. The second day followed, God divided the waters and created the firmaments, or as we know it, the sky. Then the third day, the waters gathered and were called ocean. Then the dry land was created, and out of it came fruits, the trees, and all other plants. The fourth day was the heavenly bodies, like the sun, the moon, and the stars. Next, the fifth day. They were the living creatures, specifically the birds and fishes. Then followed by the sixth day, where God created land animals. And then God said, let us create man in our image. And so out of the dust, God created a man and gave him the breath of life, and his name was Adam. God placed Adam in the Garden of Eden and instructed him to name all the animals to keep him company as well. Yet God noticed that Adam still needed a helpmeet and so caused Adam to fall in a deep sleep and took one of his ribs and made a woman, who was later named Eve. So that was the sixth day. This was the sixth day. And God saw that everything that he created was very good indeed. And so on the seventh day, the following day, God rested. Now, in the Garden of Eden, there were distinct trees that was mentioned the tree of life, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God instructed Adam and Eve that of every fruit of every tree, they may eat, except of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But while Eve was taking a stroll, a serpent, one of the beautiful creatures, was used by Satan and tempted Eve to eat of the knowledge of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what happened next? Eve was definitely tempted and so disobeyed and ate the fruit of the tree. She also gave to Adam and eventually Adam also ate. Now the fall of man had already begun as they have disobeyed God's command, their eyes opened and their innocence had already gone. They realized that they were naked and cover themselves with fig leaves. And as they heard God coming to the Garden of Eden, they hid themselves. God knew what happened and called them of what they did. Yet they pointed fingers and blamed another. Because of their disobedience, God judged and punished them. First, the serpent, the beautiful creature, that this serpent would already crawl and eat of the dust. And next to Eve, that she would be subject to a man and bear children in sorrow. And then to Adam, that he would have to work so hard in order to provide food. Not only that, God cast them, casted them out of the Garden of Eden with a flaming sword and a cherry beam to guard it. Still, we see God's mercy where he covered Adam and Eve with clothes out of the skin of animals. So the dispensation of innocence ends here. The next dispensation is consciousness. So this follows from the fall to the flood. Let us continue. After Adam and Eve was casted out of the garden, they began to produce their children, two of which was Cain and Abel. Cain was a tiller of the ground, while Abel was a keeper of the sheep. God instructed them to give an offering. Cain offered fruits, while Abel offered the firstling and fat out of the flocks. And so God was more pleased to Abel's offering because it was 
proper. This made Cain very jealous that wickedness ruled in his heart, wherein he killed Abel. And we can say, this was the very first murder of humanity. God knew what happened that he punished Cain, and that punishment was becoming a fugitive. Still, we see God's mercy where he blessed Adam and Eve with another son, whose name is Seth. And people began calling unto the name of God. People again began to multiply in the lineage of Cain, Seth, and all others. Intermarriages happened and more people multiplied. But as this happened, people began to be more wicked and evil each day that God repented that he created them. So he planned to wipe out his creation by bringing a great flood. But God's grace was with a man whose name was Noah. Noah was a righteous man. So God instructed Noah to build an ark and together with his wife, his three sons and their wives, God also instructed to bring animals by pairs, a male and a female, to be brought inside the ark. So Noah did and even warned the people. But as we see in the picture, they just laughed it off. And so the heavy rain came and there was a great flood that devoured every living thing that is not inside or every living creature not inside the ark. So the rest of humanity and creatures were drowned or were wiped out. But after the days of flood, God remembered Noah and the ark. So then he decreased the flood until the ark was able to land in a dry land. So God called them out of the ark. Noah then builded an altar for the Lord. And God brought a rainbow, promising that he would never let this great flood happen again. Thus, this ends our dispensation of consciousness. Our dispensation continues with the dispensation of human government. This is a long dispensation, but bear with me. So let us again continue after the flood. So after the flood, Noah and his family then began to multiply and people had only one language. People then began to plan to build a tower that could reach heavens. This was not pleasing to the Lord that he said, let us go down and scatter the people abroad. And so people began to have other languages that made them not understand each other. Because of this tower, because of this punishment that God did for, not, for having different languages, the people could not understand each other. That is why they cannot continue to build the tower. And to this day, that tower was named the Tower of Babel. So the next dispensation is ayan, here. Here again is the Tower of Babel as we can see it. And the next dispensation is the dispensation of promise. So this is from Abraham to Exodus. So as people again began to multiply, God's mercy and promise of a Messiah since the fall of man was still there. God called Abraham a righteous man, and he continued obeying the Lord. Now Abraham had had a wife whose name was Sarah, and they never had a children in their old age. Yet God gave them a son whose name was Isaac. And Abraham loved Isaac so much that God wanted to test Abraham. The test was to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. So did Abraham obey? Yes, he did. Yes, he did indeed. And before Abraham could slay his son for a sacrifice, God stopped him and provided a ram instead for their offering. So as Isaac grew, it was time for him to have a wife. And Abraham instructed his servant to find a wife in the place where his kindred is. The prayer of the servant was answered, and it was Rebekah, Rebekah, the one for Isaac. So then they bore twins. 
Esau, who first came out, grew, becoming a hunter and was a hairy man, while Jacob was a smooth man under the tents. There came a, came a time where Isaac grew old and was blind that he had to bless his firstborn son. Eventually and mistakenly, he blessed Jacob. And this made Esau also displeased and angered. That is why Jacob had to flee from home. Thereafter, Jacob had a big family of his own. He even had 12 sons. One of them was Joseph, a dreamer, of whom Jacob loved more that he made him a colorful coat. This made the rest of Joseph's older brothers jealous and angry at him that they planned to kill him. But instead of killing, they've placed him on a pit and later on sold him and deceived their father Jacob that Joseph was already dead. Now Joseph was sold in Egypt to Potiphar. God was with Joseph indeed that he blessed him. Joseph was a goodly man, but he was sent to prison after Potiphar's wife falsely accused of Joseph of seducing and planning evil on her. Still, God was with Joseph that even if he was in prison, God used Joseph, like interpreting dreams to prisoners, the former baker and a cupbearer, a former cupbearer of the king of Egypt, Pharaoh. Both their dreams came true. The baker was later then hanged after three days while the cupbearer was restored to Pharaoh. Then after a while it came to pass, Pharaoh also dreamt, dreamt a dream that none of his people could even interpret. The cupbearer then remembered Joseph and suggested him to Pharaoh. So then Joseph was out of prison and with God's power, he was able to interpret Pharaoh's dream wherein there will be seven years of plenty, but after will be seven years of famine. And so Pharaoh saw that God was with Joseph, that he made Joseph the ruler as well in Egypt, under him who could also help with the seven years of famine. And so the seven years of famine came. Other people outside Egypt went to buy the stored food to Joseph and in Egypt. One of those people were the brothers of Joseph. Although Joseph did not immediately reveal himself to them, since the brothers have not yet realized that he was Joseph, eventually Joseph could not hold it himself that he revealed himself to them. And they were sorry, but Joseph said God brought him for a reason in Egypt and he forgave and called all of his brothers, their families, and most especially his father Jacob, or later named Israel. And as Pharaoh heard of this, he provided the land of Goshen for them to stay. And so this ends the dispensation of promise. Another dispensation comes, which is the law, the dispensation of law. Now the generation of Joseph had all died and another Pharaoh ruled in Egypt who never knew Joseph and so made the Israelites in captivity and made them slaves and instructed all Israelite male babies to be killed because Pharaoh feared that the Israelites may grow in number and stronger. And there, but there was a Hebrew mother who hid his son inside a basket and placed him behind the bush, bush on a river bed. The next thing happened was Pharaoh's daughter found the baby and named him Moses. And she wanted to keep Moses. So eventually, after Moses was weaned from his mother, he was given to Pharaoh's daughter. And so Moses grew. Moses eventually realized how the Hebrews were being enslaved and abused. At one time, he saved a Hebrew man and killed an Egyptian guard. When Pharaoh heard about this, he wanted to capture Moses, but Moses flew instead. Moses then, after fleeing from Egypt, already had a family of his own. Later on, God heard the cries of the Israelites asking to be saved and delivered from Egypt. 
And so then God spoke to Moses in a burning bush, instructing him to go to Pharaoh so God will show signs and wonders that they may see and that he might let the, the Israelites go. But Moses answered that he was not fluent enough to speak. So the Lord told him that he can go with his brother Aaron. And so they went. Still, as they went to see Pharaoh and warned of him, the signs that God will bring, Pharaoh still refused to let the Israelites go. So God showed, showed all those signs and wonders. And as we know it, they were called plagues. Yet Pharaoh's heart was so hardened that even how many plagues were sent, he never let the Israelites go until the last plague where Pharaoh's son died, that he let, the, that he let God's people already go. God was, was with them along the journey. Even when the Egyptians wanted to take them back, God parted the Red Sea for them to cross over while he also again brought, brought it back when the Egyptians came and so they were drowned. And so the Israelites continued praising the Lord. But that was not the end of it all. The Israelites along their journey had countless of events where they were disobedient and hard-headed even when God already gave the set laws to follow and the commandments he gave to Moses. Still, because of their hard-headedness, God had to let them wander around the wilderness for 40 years. Thereafter, it was Joshua who continued leading the Israelites to the promised land after Moses. Joshua also led the Israelites to victory of their conquest. As God told them, as long as they obey God's laws, God guarantees them victories. One highlighted conquest was how the walls of Jericho fell after heeding to the instructions of the Lord. After Joshua's death, the children of Israel had no ruler except as by reason of bondage, they cried unto the Lord and he, as circumstances required, raised up judges who governed them for years. Then they provoked God to give them a king and Saul was selected. But King Saul also became disobedient to God wherein God rejected him and told Solomon, his prophet, a prophet, that he has set another king to rule Israel. He was a shepherd boy named David. One of the highlighted events of King David was while being a shepherd boy, he faced Goliath, an undefeated soldier of, a Philistine, of the Philistines. And David, claiming that he came in the name of God of Israel with his sling and some stones, threw a stone at Goliath's forehead and he fell and was dead. The Philistines then feared Israel as Israel rejoiced on their victory. King Saul heard this and it angered and feared him for he heard David would be the king. So as he planned to kill David, God was with David that it never happened. So after King Saul died, it was King David who ruled, who was then succeeded by his son Solomon. And King Solomon is known of someone who asked wisdom from God when given the choice, he could ask for other things. Solomon thus ruled, but had many wives and concubines who have served other gods. This also displeased God. At the death of Solomon, the kingdom was divided. Solomon's son Rehoboam, getting two tribes spoken of as Judah, and Jeroboam, a usurper, ten tribes called Israel. Many kings who are bad and few have ruled over Israel and Judah. It was a chaotic kingdom stage because there were southern rulers and northern rulers. And because of Israel's disobedience, God allowed them to be carried captive to other nations like Assyria, Babylon, and Persia. Still, God provided prophets and other characters who showed God's works, especially to the children of Israel. There was also Nehemiah who rebuilded the walls of Jericho. And after, they, after this came the 400 years of silence. But afterwards, the promised Messiah was born. Whose name is 
the Lord Jesus Christ. And on this slide, we see here a summary of the lineage from Abraham to Jesus. Before I end the dispensation of grace, let me just have a review. For, so starting from Abraham, his wife Sarah, they had Isaac. And with Isaac's wife, Rebecca, they had Jacob and Esau. And Jacob, whose name would be Israel, and that's where the 12 tribes came from then bore those 12, his 12 sons, and out of his son Judah was born King David, and out of King David was already Jesus Christ. So that ends our grace dispensation. I, sorry, that ends with our, the law dispensation of law. The next dispensation is grace. So this grace dispensation extends from the cross to the crown or from the descent of the Holy Spirit to the rapture of the church. So again, Jesus Christ was born in a manger and was then visited by shepherds and wise men. He grew and continued his journey, gathering his own disciples, proclaiming God's words, baptizing pe people, performing signs and wonders, miracles, teaching thousands of people and feeding them, healing all the sick, and telling as well Peter, his disciple, that he will build his church. Thus, Jesus' earthly ministry has continued. But then came to the point where Jesus was to be crucified and betrayed by one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot. And he had to be crucified and betrayed by even the people wanting to kill him. Still, he has to be sacrificed. He had to be sacrificed to fulfill God's will as he is the ultimate sacrifice for the salvation of our sins. After Jesus Christ was crucified, his sayings are true that he will rise again after three days. He resurrected and visited his disciples. One of his disciples, Thomas, did not believe in him First, unless he sees the nail-pierced hands, which he eventually saw. But Jesus said, by faith, you should believe. And so for a short time, Jesus was with his disciples. And before he ascended up to heaven, Jesus commanded them to keep on doing his ministry, proclaiming God's word to every nation, salvation, and baptism, and teaching them of his commands. So then, the disciples continued his work and added to them were other disciples or ministers like Paul and the church grew. So they ministered to all Jerusalem, to the entire world, which include us, the Gentiles. And we are here now, continue on serving the Lord Jesus Christ till he comes. So as, and as we continue, we, can, we also know what the future will hold, as the Bible says in the book of Revelation. So we are already in the book of Revelations. That there will come a time of rapture and seven years of tribulation. Rapture is when one shall be taken or the other shall be taken. taken. And those who are taken are, the, are only the children of God, those who are only saved. And those who believed and received Christ as, the, as their Savior shall be caught up and meet the Lord in the air. There will already be called the seven years tribulation. So these are two phases. Three and a half, the first three and a half, and the second three and a half. The second three and a half years is the great tribulation, wherein the Antichrist will show of himself, of his true self. Because at first he will come as someone who is righteous, as someone who is perfect, as someone who can claim himself to be God until he has all the authority ruling the people. He will also show great sign, signs and many will worship him. Yet he will show his true colors and he will command the mark of the beast. And those who will not obey him, he will slay. 
he will find those who still believed in the Lord Jesus Christ during this tribulation, tribulation and will also kill them. But after this, after these seven years of tribulation, we have the battle of Armageddon. And in this battle, Christ, together with his angels, together with the saved people, with him, with his saints, will come down on earth and battle with the Antichrist and his underlings. Christ won and sent Antichrist and his underlings to the bottomless pit. And that will end our dispensation. The next dispensation will be the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ, his 1,000 year. Afterwards, Christ will reign for a thousand years on earth, and at these times, sin will be passive. But thereafter, Satan and his underlings will come out of the pit and come to earth to deceive many. Thus, Another battle will happen, which is called the Battle of Gog and Magog. This will be the final battle. And this final battle, victory will still be towards Christ, his angels, his saints, or his children. This will usher us to the next great white throne judgment, where everyone will be judged by God. And when I say everyone, everyone indeed. And as God has said, he will send Satan and his underings to the lake of fire for eternity. And those who are not saved, there, afterwards, there will be a new heaven and new earth. As for God and his angels, his saints and his children, they will reign with him in heaven for eternity. And this ends our Bible dispensation. This is the summary that I can give from the book of Genesis to Revelations. Thank you po. Salamat po. God bless.